Hey everyone, welcome to uh, a new Let's Play Poorly series. Uh, I realize that I've got a bunch of these going, but they were so much fun to make, so I'm just going to keep on doing it, because no one's going to be able to tell me to stop. Uh, this is Astrox Imperium, the newest version, uh, Beta 126B just dropped, um, and uh, it is a Christmas miracle, I guess. I don't know, it's not a miracle. The, the dev Momo has done a lot of great work on it. It's gotten some really great updates. Um, I understand there's still a couple of little bugs and glitches in the current version, um, but hopefully those will get smoothed out over the next week or so. Uh, still very playable. So uh, I streamed a little bit of this uh, a couple days back and uh, had a lot of fun with it. I, I mean, I always do. Uh, I streamed about two and a half hours and those, those streams are uh, available on the channel uh, somewhere. I'm, wherever uh, but uh, I'm gonna actually be doing this as a series of just videos I'm not gonna be streaming these these are gonna be shorter you know 30 minutes long like usual uh, and uh, yeah so I'll continue to do the streams I think uh, but I'll also do this as a separate parallel track so we're gonna do this in a new sandbox and we're gonna call ourselves Archibus poorly we're gonna do regular free play mode uh, we're going to be this little young dude my other dude uh on the on the one that's a stream is um this guy the old grizzle old man um it could be any number of these people but i think i'm just going to be a little kid because uh this this is archivist poorly uh do we want to give him anything fun for an accessory uh do we want to make him look weird no i don't know about that oh that's okay I wish I could give him googly eyes. That would be hilarious if I could give him googly eyes. Oh, I'll just I'll give him these shiny pitch black Vin Diesel eyes. All right, what are we going to pick here for this? Let's say, oh, what are the extract? Okay, so the extractors, I wasn't, I'm an extractor on the stream, so maybe I'll do something else. Labor, hmm, mining, production, and service. Yeah, okay, sure, we'll do labor. Uh, and then we'll be a distributor hmm yeah we get a minor bonus to market prices I like that okay that means maybe we want to do commerce yeah let's do a com do commerce be distributor I mean we could do any of the like it doesn't really matter I don't know I, I shouldn't say it that way what it what I mean is that it is absolutely fine to play in a particular faction with a job that is Ran, random or not affiliated with this in any way like I could do commerce sentinel and that would be fine um, or I could do enforcement distributor and that would be fine like it's not only is it playable it creates a unique game but I am super lame and basic so I'm just gonna do commerce distributor uh, we're gonna do 50 sectors we're not gonna go just crazy like we did on the stream uh, we're going to do a regular default sector layout. We want to show the unexplored sectors. We do want to allow the warp drives. Mm, sector environment and sector security be about the same. Skybox. Let's uh, let's keep this one nice and crazy. <laughs> Astrox's default skyboxes are just absolutely like achingly gorgeous, but they're so unrealistic. It's kind of insane, uh, but they're fun. Uh, they're really fun, and I and I like them so. Uh, I just, I personally, I prefer more realism in my space, but that's not what this game is about. This game is about things being just so, uh, you could lick them. They're so, well, that, uh, yeah, it's gross, but, uh, okay. Regular uh, station stuff. Um, let's do multiple warp gate links. Uh, we just want to have a lot of connectivity. Everything else about the same. I don't really usually do a lot of adjustment on this. Someday I might to get like a thematic game in a certain particular way. Like I'm able to say, oh, I want to do hard mode or I want to do easy mode. Or I want to do something where I have a really hard time getting resources, but uh, but buying and selling once I do is easier. You know, that sort of thing. Like I could, I, you can you can do so much. And uh, the dev Momo just put out a video going over how to use the sandbox settings to get exactly what you want uh, and I uh, really recommend looking through uh, you know watching that video uh, so the economy um, I mean, you could make it more uh, more dynamic or less dynamic let's see 
This option will determine the frequency in which a marketplace will become available in a generated station. Yeah, about that should be about fine. We don't want to change the profit margin. That feels a little cheesy to me. Um, but the economic restock frequency, do we want to change that? No, maybe not. Mm, nah, that's fine. Missions, we keep these the same. Player ship is going to stay the same. And PC ships are going to stay the same. So our mercenaries and raiders come down to events. So uh, this option here, economic events, allow you to control the number of economic events that are generated each time the event generator is triggered. A high value will increase the number of events that, that can occur. Oops, that's a typo. Uh, hey, Momo, if you're watching, that should be that can occur. Uh, a low value will reduce the frequency of these events. And this is going to be the same across all of these different types of events, right? So economic, political, research, raider, environmental, security, social, and faction. And they're all set to rare. Events do happen fairly regularly, uh, but this means that there's a, they are well-balanced uh, and they're not just going to be spamming you constantly with events. Uh, so if you wanted to have a much more politically volatile game uh, and right now the sandbox or the the factions aren't doing a lot in the game uh, he's not done his full like full-blown revamp of that yet but if you ever if you wanted to have like a highly politically volatile game crank this all the way up uh, if you wanted to uh, do something where you have a lot of raider events a lot of different places getting attacked crank it all the way up if you wanted social upheaval to be happening constantly, crank it all the way up, that sort of thing. So uh, that's, yeah, that this is, this is the, to my mind, this section here, the events area, is the meat and potatoes of a really interesting sandbox experience. Uh, if you want to just have a particular style of game, this is kind of where you go. And maybe tie that in with stations and economy, and, and you're good to go. And then extras, everything here is fine. We're going to close that off. Our right, poorly is about to start. We're going to generate the galaxy. This doesn't take nearly as long to do just 50. Um, 50 sectors. 500 takes uh, a couple minutes. <laughs> and what's interesting about this game is that it, it kind of... It, it's a hybrid in terms of how the sectors are live. Uh, it's a hybrid between something like X4, Elite Dangerous, and so on, and Elite, or Elite, or Elite. In the Elite, Elite games, uh, the sectors essentially don't exist if you're not there. So nothing changes, nothing happens in those places. They're, they're zero. They're, z they're nothing. Um, but in X4, Elite Dangerous, and so forth, uh, in those games, the, the universe exists everywhere at all times, and so on. Astrox is kind of in between. So those sectors do exist, but and stuff can happen in them through the event system, but you're not going to be worrying about like ships moving from here to there and so on. Like the 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 on the ground events don't happen in the game in other sectors from the one that you're in. Uh, but events can happen to those sectors through the event generation system. Alright, so here we are. A couple things I need to do here first is open all my panels. And then I want to make sure that I have the option to continue playing, running in the background. I want to run in the background because I get nervous about whether or not my OBS is working correctly and I need to check all the time. And I'm checking now because when I streamed the last time, I spent the first 45 minutes with just the, first, the upper left quadrant of the screen visible. So, yeah. Okay, so here we are. What are we doing? Uh, we're going to look around first and see... Okay, so these here are ships flying around. These are uh, different gates. Whoa, God, that took a second. Uh, that was a glitch. Um, these uh, hexagons here are uh, warp gates. And uh, in this sector, the opening sector, there's a bunch of them. There we go. There's four of those. I think that's all we got. Now, right now, our uh, scanner is limited. Uh, we only we can only handle four uh, four items in uh, four targeting items at once, and so I have to wait until these scan, and then I'm going to clear all of my locked targets. I should probably create a touch portal panel 
for this game because there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, hotkeys, and I never remember what they are, ever. And uh, you can do you can play the game almost entirely with your mouse, um, but uh, I, I possibly have mentioned this in other streams and other uh, videos before. Is I don't like playing space games with my mouse. Uh, it feels it, it's counter immersive to me. I, the mouse is like the least science fictiony device imaginable. So I prefer, if I can avoid it, to use the keyboard or uh, even better, the touch panel with a nice, uh, nice display on it. Uh, okay, so there we go. The touch portal, I should say. I keep saying touch panel. It's touch portal. We also want to take a look and see what kind of. Uh, Asteroids we have out here. I already know right now it's going to be atomite because we're in the open, we're in our uh, starting sector. But um, it's always a you know, good habit to, to just check. And then also we want to look and see uh, what station this is, uh, and see what else is out there. I don't think there are any other. I don't think there are any um, structures out here, right? Because there's stations and then there are structures. And I know very little about the structures and how they work. I know there was a lot of revamp and updating into that stuff and. Uh, that was done uh, you know, sometime in the last year, but I haven't played much of this game in a little bit. Uh, and finally coming back now uh, with uh, B126 uh, because uh, it made me squee so hard when I discovered that he was updating the UI and, uh, and changing some, some things around that would make the game much more fun for me. Uh, it was fun before, now it is super fun. Uh, so let me see. Uh, how is our audio here? Maybe I need to pull this up a notch. I'm going to pull it up to there just to get the background music and stuff because the music is great as well. Uh, okay, so what are we doing? Uh, I'm running low on energy. I'm not running low. I'm running out of energy slowly. I'm 83%. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Void Raiders. And we're going to take a look at that station and, and see what we can. You, uh, you, you generally want to go into stations and so forth because your journal is going to update every time you uh, enter a station. It's going to, and if you go to the market, it will update the prices in your journal so that you'll know. Uh, it, it doesn't do dynamic updating as the prices change. You have to go to the station, go into the market to actually get that, that information uploaded to your computer, which, uh, you know, it's, it's technically unrealistic. Or it has been unrealistic since the early 90s in terms of the availability of things like the internet. Um, so the future is unlikely to be any different. But as gameplay goes, it's a nice compromise. It does mean that you are forced to go and, and go explore and go to places you've already been so that you can update the information and so on. And so it, it's you know it's not, it's not bad and it, it it isn't it isn't a whole lot of grunt work either. It's not a whole lot of busy work. It's it's not it's not like that. Uh, okay, so we're going to take a look at our market. We're going to just close that up real quick. See if there are any missions. No missions. There are very rarely any missions at the start. I think there used to be missions at the start in older uh, in older betas of the game, but uh, he uh, tweaked uh, the generation of those to make it a little bit harder at the beginning, which I think was the right choice. So here we are in the garage. Uh, there used to be a button for the... Uh, life support on the garage he took it out he's going to put it back in i think uh there were some concerns that maybe it, it, it's kind of muscle memory for a lot of people here uh so but you can get to it from here and we're going to put in our protein bar our basic filter we need a thermal regulator and we need waste management we basically need diapers we always start with diapers well i always start with diapers oh and we can change the custom colors of our ship uh engines i'm going to do what am i going to do I'm gonna do no. That's my ship. That's I don't want that. No, I want uh, this. No, that's oh. This is all I haven't seen this. This is cool. What is that? Glossy. The glossiness of the. Sh ah, okay. So that's the ship colors for that. That is something else. I don't know what that is. What is that? Oh, that's oh, that's the secondary. Ooh, that's the highlights. Okay. All right. This is like uh, this is like Barbie dress up. Uh, which is not a complaint in any way. This is cool. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do purple for that. Yeah, and then I want my, uh, I want the, ah, <laughs> look at that. That looks, that looks like a pilot light <laughs> for a, for a furnace, and I am all about that. I love it. Wow. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, why is my armor already damaged? That wasn't my. Oh, that was my armor. That wasn't my uh, energy. 
That was my armor. How did my armor start damaged? That's creepy. I'm going to fix it. There we go. Disable the pop-up. Okay. Um, all right. So we're, where was I? What was I doing? Okay. Yeah. So we need to get life support. We're going to go here. Uh, we need to get support. And first thing well, I always buy is diapers. Get my disposal. Wow. That's a really expensive disposables. Oh, good God. 105% of waste life support. That's only 25%. We just need one of those. And then we go back into here, put our diapers on, and then we need to get a thermal regulator. So we're going to do uh, thermal, I think. Yeah. So the thermal, okay, well, you do a little cheap thermal controller. That'll just fill them all out. And over time, we'll be able to do more. The, uh, the update, the most recent update changed the way a life support was handled. So it used to be that if your life, if you were in a uh, hostile space environment, your life support would just start dropping as soon as you enter the system. Now, though, it only starts going down if you have, uh, it's either armor damage or hull damage. I think you have to have hull damage. And I, I have some quibbles about that implementation. Like, I like the idea a whole lot about just saying your life support is going to leak out, basically, if, you're, if you have a hole in your ship. The problem I have with that concept is that it kind of interferes with the way this is designed to begin with. Like, it doesn't make too much sense for food, for the food synthesis element to, 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 to be interfered with when you have uh, hull damage. Like, where, where's it going? Where's your food going? Is it going out the hole? Like, that seems weird. Um, water filtration? Maybe I could see that. Maybe. Thermal, definitely. 100%. Totally get it. If if you if you have a breach in your hull, your heat's going to go away. You need to have good heat. Yeah, so that I can understand life support dropping from that. And then waste management? No. I mean, if I had a, if I had a breach in my hull and my... My waste started leaking out. I'd be like, yes, more please. I don't want my poop floating around. I want it to go out. So yeah, I, I think there's a conceptual disconnect a little bit between that decision to, to go to life support drops only when you have a hull breach, which I think is a great decision, and this, uh, just the way life support is conceived of in the, uh, in the game generally uh, prior to that update. Uh, but, you know... It, <laughs> This is, in a, in a sense, it's kind of just like flavor text. These are just four slotted elements for life support, and you just have to improve them, and then that's fine. It doesn't, it, it impacts the immersion quality of, of that, uh, and the, as the, the rationale doesn't quite work, but it does not impact the gameplay. In fact, I think this is the improvement, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. Uh, it's, a, it's a complaint, but it's not a, it's not a mean complaint. <laughs> uh, okay. So, what we're going to do first, uh, oh, first thing we want to look at is we are in uh, a science faction station. Void Raiders here is a, is a science faction, it's a communication hub. And we are not that, right? So we are commerce. So we have a really good reputation with commerce. We have no reputation at all with science or any of the other factions right now. So it's going to be a while before we can uh, build that up. We do want to build it up because it helps us with taxes, I think, with, with trade and prices and, and, and all those fun things. So And that usually gets done by taking missions, but we don't have any missions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the garage here. Uh, we have an ore harvester. Okay, so I'm going to pull in my ore harvester and leave these two in my cargo. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to pull these into storage so I have more room. I have a... Cargo bay of 331.7. That, I think, is coming from... Because normally this is 310. But I think because I'm commerce faction, or maybe it's because I am uh, the commercial guy. What's what's my, what's my... What am I, what am I doing again? Oh, my God. What, I'm a distributor. Uh, I think that... I think I have... That's... Yes, my cargo... My, I have a 7% cargo bonus, an 8% market bonus. So that's why I'm at 331.7. Uh, so let me see. Also, let's see if I can do a cargo... Expansion. Oh God, no! There aren't any good ones here. Uh, no, I mean there's a great one here, but I can't afford that. So uh, yeah, we're not, we're not going to worry about that right now. So we're going to go out and we're going to do some mining a little bit. Let's see if we can uh, hit the space bar to get to tactical view. 
and the tactical view helps you identify locations of various things, but it is not nearly as pretty. Now, where the heck? There we go. There's one. Oh, there's one even closer. Okay, we're going to go over there. Oh, that was the other thing I need to do. I need to switch my hotkey for the auto uh, afterburner, uh, the auto, the toggle afterburner. Uh, I don't like it being caps lock. I prefer to have it on, have it be, be oh, what, no. What's that about? Uh-oh. Why does it want my joystick? No, don't want my joystick. Let's try this again. Oh no. I don't know which one that is. I don't know what button that is. Well, it doesn't matter. We'll just do it with the shift key then. But normally I set it to B, uh, but for some reason something weird is happening and it uh, won't let me correctly do that. That's fine. So I'll just hold the shift key down and that just gives me my autopilot. All right. Coming over here and then we're going to turn on our modules, our two mining modules, and boom, we start mining. While we're doing that, I'm going to sneakily uh, go underneath my computer here, unplug my joystick, go in here and fix this. There we go. Now we're good. And then I'm going to awkwardly uh, just uh, be right back while I plug my stick back in. No idea what that was about. Don't, doesn't matter. Problem solved. All right, so I think I, yeah, uh, he added a new uh, feature in a few updates ago where if you right click on a tar on an eye, on an object, you can uh, get special control commands like that would be mining and so on. I would prefer to have some kind of a text box here just telling me what that means because I don't actually know what that means. What is the eyeball? What does that do? God, what did that do? I don't know what that was. Uh, where did I go? Where am I now? What happened to me? How do I undo that? Oh God. That's, that's weird. Where am I? How do I, uh, okay. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, I right clicked again and it was fine. So I guess that little eyeball means look at this thing. And then this is the mining one. Uh, and then that, this one here is the deselect. Okay, yeah, but I, I would have, I would prefer to have, uh, so like I could do this, I think. No, no, I can't. That one doesn't let me do it. Can I do it on that one? Yeah, so that one, you right click. I guess you can't do it on stations for some reason. Can I do it on myself? Yes, I can. Uh, Okay, all, mod all modules to target, uh, afterburner, right? Okay, yeah, so there's things. But again, I really would like to have some kind of text overlay or something that pops up when you hover over it so that you would see um, what that is, but that's okay. Now we're gonna head back because we are fully loaded. So now I can hit B and get my autopilot to, to go fully, okay. And I don't have to hold down the shift key. That was weird, I think maybe one of my uh, Throttles was uh, was set somehow or something. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. We are back here, and now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go and sell to here. Uh, Forty-eight hundred for that. We could go to the refinery and refine this stuff, but I know, already know because we could go put it in here and then t break it down to its component parts. Which costs a little bit of money, but I also am pretty sure it's not going to give me as much as just selling the ore. Um, so we're just going to do that. Gonna sell the ore, got a little bit of money. Any missions yet? Yes, okay, so now I can harvest Adamite in Velat Rast, which is where I am, return with 54 ore to Void Raiders in Velat Rast and get 23.5. And that will be for the fa science faction, which we will want. We want to improve, uh, improve our rep with uh, this faction. All right, so be sure to read the detailed stuff. Yes, we know what we're doing. And then down here, it says our mission is to harvest the special stuff and bring it back to Void Raiders, uh, which is this station. So 
And these are some details. Ooh, text. I didn't know that was there. Maybe it wasn't before. I don't know. Uh, okay, so if we look at our map, obviously we're starting and ending here, but this is how the map works. You hit M and you come up to this galactic map and you can see all the stars because I turned on that option to see all the stars. So Velat Rast has connections to uh, all of those other locations. Uh, Uizan, Rasji, Sofe, and Ilse. Uh, and so maybe missions would have us go there and so on, but this one does not. So we're gonna do this. And now we need to go into tactical mode so we can find the special ore location. There it is. And we're gonna go down that way. Hit our booster. Getting in close, turn on our modules, which I'm sure there's a hotkey, but I don't remember what it is. And why am I going too fast? Uh, okay, there we go. Now we can hit turbo, shows up down here, uh, and it just does, it basically is game speed increase. Our mission is completed, but we're just gonna keep mining the atomite just because, well, why not? Done. Okay, now we head back to Void Raiders. Look at that. Pilot light engines. I love it. Thrusters. Look so cool. My ship is... My God, yeah, we always start with the derp ship. The, I, I, I mean, it's not ugly. It's just, it's very, it's a tiny little, tiny little gnat of a ship. Okay, and now we got our mission done. All right, we got some money. Uh, our The insurance that we paid in to, to take the mission has been returned to us, and we get four skill points. So now we're going to go into the university. We got 41 skill points. We started out with, what, 37, I guess. And we're going to see if we can get some, uh, yeah, mission max contracts. We want to go up by one so we can take two contracts at a time. Disable pop-up while it just does that. And then uh, we need to go, I think we'll need to go somewhere else to pick up, uh, let's see, oh no, we don't have to do it here, but there's another, there's a third one, Mission Loyalty, where if you get that skill, then your loyalty level with the faction goes up faster if you take missions. Uh, so we'll, we'll want to go and see if we can find that one at another station. Uh, all right, so Archippus Corley has earned the first mission completed medal, we get credits and some more skill points. Just waiting on this to finish. I could turbo it. There we go. Okay, now we can do this, which gives us a mission payment bonus of 5%, and you can train up to level 10 for each of these, uh, so this is good. All right, we'll do that. Still have 53k and still have 44 points because we just got 12 from that from that uh, pop-up. Uh, and then uh, let's see what else we can get in here. So. One thing I like to do is uh, get the fleet commander option. So this train level means this is, will train it to level one. It's not currently a level one, it will train it to level one, as it says right over here. This will allow me to have a merc. Uh, I can get, get a mercenary uh, to join me and do various things, uh, mining, combat, recon, and so on. Uh, and then eventually, once you've got mercenaries that are up at your maximum loyalty, I think they have to be max loyalty, I'm not 100% sure, you can then uh, put them, uh, basically transfer them over to a station that you build, and then they can run the station. Uh, not done anything like that. That's only been around for the last, maybe the last year, and uh, I have not played with that even at all. Like, I, have, I know absolutely nothing about it. So, uh, do I want to spend all 25 points on that right now? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to see if there are any university skills. University discount. This brings a price discount. I definitely want that. Back into turbo mode. And then the training speed one. I don't really need that. Uh, definitely like having a discount. Do I want it again? Hmm, no, I don't think so. I don't think I want it again. Uh, but I do want to check to see. Okay, so I can, uh, I can operate different kinds of ships. I'm currently able to operate an escort. 
Uh, excavation. All right, let's see here. Minor basic. Okay, so what we're going to want to do, one thing we're definitely going to do is uh, get our uh, minor basic operation up to a level where we'll start be able to buy uh, new mining uh, lasers. Uh, I know that we're supposed to be a trader, uh, just, you know, as far as the role play of, of our starting um, faction and starting uh, job are concerned, uh, which gave us the cargo and mission bonus, or cargo and market bonuses. Uh, but it it's always worthwhile to have mining, mining skills. So I'm going to grab those. And last up, maybe, let's see, so this is for armor, this is for fixing the ship. Uh, do I want... Is there anything from markets? I don't know. Market auditor. What does that do? Lowers the tax. Excellent. I could I could go for some of that. Yeah, so we're going to skill that one up as well. And we are down to 1,300. Ugh. Any mission here? Okay, well, we'll yeah, all right. So this uh, first episode, we're already at 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is going to grab this one last mission. I'm going to undock. We're going to go do that one, come back, and then call it for this episode. Uh, let's find, is that the right ore that we need, or is it a different one? I don't know. Well, maybe it is that one. We'll find out. Oh, no, that's not going to work because I forgot to sell the ore that I already had. Sorry, guys. We'll be, we'll be back. We'll be back in a minute. Hang on. Oopsies. Oh, God. I forgot to turn on my autos. Uh, all right, we're just gonna sell the atomite. There we go. Boom. All right. Now that price went down. Uh, oh no, we did the whole thing. Uh, the prices will vary because uh, they will start to drop as as the market gets oversaturated. Uh, okay, we need to be. I want to turn on auto dock and auto warp because uh, why not? All right. So yeah, there we go. Let's turn. Let's, oh no, nope. That's the afterburner doing that. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Is this correct? Oh, we're still on turbo. That is not the right one. Well, let's just get rid of it anyway because uh, it's confusing the heck out of me. All right, let's go sell that ore. There's definitely a different. Um, there's definitely an, another uh, ore out there somewhere. So I just gotta find. Oh, there it is, right up there. Coming in hot, coming in way too hot. There we go. Because we're on turbo, the game kind of spazzes out a little bit. Uh, if I slowed it down, then my ship would turn around a lot faster. Uh, okay, so we've got the mission completed, so we just need to fill out the, the rest of our uh, the rest of our cargo here. done and head back to the station. Here we go. We've got our money. We're going to sell the ore. Done. We have 34k. Now, last thing I want to check is to see if there's a cargo skill. Ship cargo stacker. Yes. Maximum car cargo increase by 10%. Only cost five skill points. Only cost ten uh, nine point three k. So we're gonna do that. That's our last thing we're gonna do. And we're still in turbo, so that's why it's going so fast. All right, slow that down a little bit, just cause. And we're good. All right, so now we can hold three three sixty two point seven instead of three thirty one. So that is gonna help us for next time. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save it here. Mm, save and quit to the top screen. There we go. All right, and as we go forward, we're going to explore the universe, uh, do some more trading, maybe get into some fights with some bad guys, and uh, hopefully have a bit of fun. So I uh, hope you join me for next time. Thanks for watching. See you later.